fresh off the press, I'm just looking at the article just now. Uh, it says, and, then, and I'm looking at CNBC for anybody that's interested. Uh, Consumer spending fell in October, according to the new CNBC and RF retail monitor tracking and card transactions. So what it's saying, as I open up this article, what it's saying is uh, consumer spending, excluding autos and gas, they always excluding something, but excluding autos and gas fell at 0.08%. The transactions fell. And uh, it says that the retail monitor uh, monitor is a joint production by CNBC, blah, 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 based on 9 billion annual credit card and debit card transactions collected and uh, annualized by Affinity Solutions. The October data, accounting for more than 500 billion in sales, show weakness in gas station sales, electronics, appliances, and furniture at home stores. Alex, with they saying it's a little weakness uh, in October, my question to you is, do you think we will see a recession in the you know, near future or you think we got a long way to go and why? I don't know if I'd say I, I don't think we would see one in the near future. And I'm, and I say this trying to look at history, say back in 2008, right before- So wait, wait, when, I, when I'm saying, when I'm saying near future, I mean like, before June 2024. That's near future. Right, right, right. That's what I'm kind okay. of, yeah. Okay. So, okay. and I see that um, because looking at history, like, so we had saw, we had seen a booming economy, you know, housing prices going up real fast, stock market, all that. During, like right before 2008, 2008 hits, everything collapses. We go through a recession. Um. Whereas I would say the beginning all of all this started with COVID where we saw the dip in COVID and things shot up real fast, but then things started to pull back again and then interest rates started to rise. Um, and we saw layoffs, we saw layoffs in the tech industry. Um, we've started to see homeowners can or new home buyers can't afford housing and stuff like that. So I think we're already seeing pain. I don't know how much, if we do see a recession, I don't know how huge it would be, I would say. Um, I'm not opposed, I'm not saying that we won't see one, but if we do see one, I would question how, um, how much of an impact would it have with what's already happened uh in in current day like with the layoffs and stuff that we've already seen housing being more unaffordable because and maybe i'm just you know sheltered to just florida because i've seen i've already seen people struggling so that's the only thing i would question um is how big of a recession would it be but we've also talked about you know we would start to see a recession once interest rates start to linger and stop increasing once they hit a pause so this is all kind of uh a, a learning experience for me i'm interested to see what will happen but i don't know really what to expect out of this i would say um so i just pulled up the bureau of Lib statistics unemployment rates at 3.9 the best the best uh, month we've ever had was 3.4, 3.3. So we're not far from all-time employment. Yeah, the tech sector layoff, that's a small percentage in the total economic economy. So just think that's people in California, that's people in, in the tech sector, Oregon, Washington. So that's three, we still got another 40 some states It's still, everything is just rolling on like candy. I mean, you seen, and to your point, you've seen, you know, strikes where people didn't get laid off. It was just, people just didn't get a paycheck, their normal standardized paycheck. But that didn't, you know, have a real effect on it anyway, because that's, you know, a few thousand, you know, 10, 15,000 people. It's millions. Um, and right now at 3.9, and I'm just reading the 
uh, article off the Bureau of Labor Statistics, both the unemployment rate at 3.9 and the number of unemployed persons at 6.5 million. So 6.5 million divided by the number of people that's here in the United States, about 3.9%. But again, I believe the number is skewed. It's skewed because the number of people, everybody, you know, let's say 15 and younger can't get a job in the first place. So that's a big skew to the total number. And then so with that, that's and that's the unemployment rate that, uh, you know, the government puts out. So that's 3.9. So let's go for the U6 employment data. The U6 uh, data, it shows it at 6.80%. So with that, for people and these numbers are usually skewed uh, in a major way in U6 data is people that's unemployed and it's including the people because the government's tracker only track the people that's on unemployment. The U6 tracks the people that didn't apply for unemployment or they unemployment benefits ran out and they didn't get another job. So, and then for just for people that don't know, full employment in the United States is 6% on the government data. That's full employment. So everything lower than 6% is access of employment. So that's that's more people than you know the standard the standard that is. But six percent is considered full employment in the United States. We're at three point nine, and we've been in the threes for a long while. So let's just say to get back to six percent, let's say six percent. That's still, you know, a million million and a half people that need to be laid off. I mean. The recession, that's why the, uh, because like the the federal government is just like you, Alex. I don't see how a million or some people get laid off to, you know, put us in a, a deep recession. So that's why they say, you hear economists say shallow recession and things of that nature. You know, it'll be a soft landing because that's a big, long curve of a lot of people that need to be laid off and a lot of money taken out of the system for over a million people to get laid off. You know, we don't have, we don't have a housing crisis on the horizon. Housing crisis meaning like, you know, oh wait, we don't have that. I mean, the recession is gonna come from a dynamic that we weren't prepared for. The dynamic we wasn't prepared for was the higher interest rates that the federal government did at a fast pace. I mean, we went from zero to now almost 5% on a short-term curve in less than a year. Usually that take about a decade to do. So understand how that works. So I believe the recession or some version of it, I think it's gonna be after June, 2024. So it's mine more in the long-term horizon. I think it's gonna be more September September 2024, maybe. But I usually believe that it's gonna happen at the end of a year more than at the beginning. Like the COVID, it started in March and then we recovered by the end. <laughs> we recovered by the end of 2020. But I think it usually happens at the end of the year, especially changing of uh, presidential uh, people. But it's just a wild ass guess. I don't know, we'll see. But I, I do see things that's in the making that's making it hard. I mean, I see, more jobs going to automation. I also see like all these workers that's going on strike, especially in the automotive industry, especially in the office building space. Um, I know a lot about automation. So these companies are, they have to pay more because these workers are gonna strike. The company's gonna pay more, but this is gonna be to less workers because they will invest heavily into automation, re uh, eliminating jobs that have redundant tasks that can be done. So, I can see that coming on the horizon very soon. So that will cause more unemployment. Now, how fast the other other companies adapt this or adopt this, excuse me, it's, it's up to them. But these companies and these board members, they will be looking at ways to save capital. I mean, I just talked about last week about how uh, people in the beverage industry, they're, they're changing their philosophy on how to uh, go to market. That's that's what's going on. It's not it's not uh, everything is not going to stay status quo. I mean, even you, you know, you own a business, you're still looking for ways to cut costs. 
you know, you own rental properties. You're looking at ways to raise the rent and eliminate your costs. That's what these businesses are doing too. It's not, it's not a one-off fits all. And don't believe for one second that just because these uh, employees went on strike, they're getting higher pay, higher raises, that they're going to take the money out of the board members, the owners, and the shareholders' pocket. So that's why they will be forced to automate, to eliminate jobs. The same way you saw Walmart do it. <clears throat> they raised the uh, pay to $10 an hour across the board. So that cost them $6 billion more. The $6 billion, did it come from the Waltons? Did it come from the uh, Walmart shareholders? No, it came from closing down stores, eliminating jobs, and making the shoppers be the workers themselves. But they're not... So that's what's going to happen. And people need to understand the nuance. It's great to ask for money. Uh, go for, you know, for all the reasons that you go on strike and you're striving to make a better life for your family. I agree with that 100%. But also understand the flip side of the owners, the owners, the CEOs, and these companies, what, they, what their objective is also. Their objective is never to take money out of their pockets to feed, to feed your family. And they won't do it. So it, it's going to be interesting times, especially with the unaffordability of houses and things of that nature. Now it's now it's that technically cheaper to rent than buy a house. So that will be interesting to see how that works and how that impacts the GDP. But all in all, I think we we got a little time, but I think it's going to be more damage going on in the underlying sectors than it was before. With all that being said, guys, if you liked the video, hit the like button, uh, leave a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.